Okay, everybody, now let's have a look at what's going on here. So if you have a copy of the lecture notes, I'd like you to go ahead and take a look at this here. So I'd like you to just very briefly complete the table for this equation, x minus 2y is equal to 8. So, you know, pause the video for a bit and just uh, quickly do this here. Alrighty, now that we're all done with that here, let's take a look at this. We should be able to fill this in very easily by just simply using substitution here, right? You can put in the net y equals negative 4 here, solve for this, and you get x is 0. And then you can do the same with the rest here. You get negative 3, negative 2, 6, oops, 8, and 1. Now, you'll note in this situation here, so now let's take a look at the numbers and see what's going on here. So there are a lot of different properties that you note about the numbers here that you can see what's going on here. But probably the most important thing to note is the fact that we seem to have this constant rate of change. I know that sounds kind of like an oxymoron here, but we seem to have this sort of rate of change here, this changing that's always the same. So for instance here, we can see that y constantly changes by a positive 1 no matter what we do. Right, as we go transition from uh, column to column. And while we're doing that here, you can see that x increases by 2. So we have this x increases by 2 here, x increases by 2, same thing here, x increases by 2. So we seem to have this rate of change here that's always the same no matter what. Now, we can investigate this some more by simply looking at this uh, graph here. We can plot the points since we have x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So let's see, we have 0, negative 4 here, then 2, negative 3, and then uh, 4, negative 2 here, 6, negative 1, and then 8, 0 here. And you'll note that if we do a quick sketch, you'll note that very easily you can see that this all lines up here. So we can see that this, our equation here, actually looks something like this. Okay? And we end up with this line here. We end up with a linear uh, equation here, which should, be no, uh, which should be no surprise to you given what you did in Algebra 1. This should be a lot of review what happened here. So we can see that in this situation, our line looks something like this here. And this rate of change here, a lot of you know as what is known as a slope here. So you can very easily show this here. We're going to go ahead and quickly run through that here. We note that in this situation for something like this here, we can define the slope of a line exactly in this fashion here. It's the ratio of the vertical change of a line to the horizontal change of that line here. Uh, and we often use the letter m to represent slope here. So m in this case is our slope. It's going to be the change in y over change in x. Note the triangles are deltas. Uh, that represents a change. So change in y divided by change in x, which in this case, I think many of you know the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's our rise of a run here. So we can see that sort of thing going on like this here. Now, in this situation here, right, our slope is very nice because that tells us a lot about the line here. We'll go into that a little bit more. So we can see what happens when m changes here. That will give us a, a bit of nature, a bit of information about lines. So, for instance, a line with slope of one half will look something. Will always have the same sort of general, uh, the same sort of general appearance here. Of course, the slope is not enough. We want a little bit more here. So usually, what comes, what goes hand in hand with slope is what we have our y-intercept here. So you know, oftentimes you have equations of lines written like this in slope intercept form here where you have you know m is your slope here and b is your y intercept now why do they choose these letters i don't know um we're actually not exactly sure why m and b were chosen to represent slope and y intercept uh respectively it you know, I guess your guess is as good as mine here. So most of the time when you write the equation of a line, it's going to be written in this form here. And this is a very advantageous form because, as you can see, it's got information encoded directly into it. By simply looking at the equation like this here, we can read off what the slope is. We can read off what the y-intercept is and all as well. Now, the other uh, thing that happens here, the other uh, another way we can write lines... We can also write in what is known as standard form here because we mathematicians happen to like it when we have our constants on one side and our variables on the other. So our standard form is going to be written something like this here. No, it's going to be ax plus by equals c. Uh, in general, a, b, and c are constants here. We try to make them all integers. We try to clear all the fractions if possible here, make things a lot easier for ourselves. You know, and also, we mathematicians just also like to have 0 on one side here, set something equal to 0. So sometimes you can also write it as ax plus by plus c equals 0. Notice that in this situation, this c and this c are going to be different. One's going to be a negative, one's going to be positive, but it really doesn't matter because a, b, and c are all just placeholder numbers anyway. Okay, now I mentioned before something about uh, slopes of lines here, and we can talk about what happens with lines or lines are positive, negative, or zero, or different kinds of slopes here. So, for instance, if we look at our coordinate graph here, something like this, here's x and here's y, we can think of what it means to be a positive slope, right? If m is greater than zero, then delta y over delta x is going to be a positive quantity here. Now, 
if you're dividing two numbers and it's positive, this means that the two numbers have to have the same sign. They're either both positive or both negative. Which means, so if we take both positive, for instance, delta y, the rise is positive and the run is positive. Now, positive rise means we're going to go up on the y-axis. Positive run means we're going to go on, uh, right on the x-axis here. So our line is going to look something like this here. We're going to have, for, for instance, something that looks like this here, where you have a positive slope like this. Here, m is greater than 0. We can see that the line increases as we go left to right. Now, also, we could have also done this with a negative as well. If delta y is negative, that means the rise goes down, and the, run, and the negative is also, and um, delta x is negative, so that means the run is also negative as well. So that means it runs a negative direction on both the y and the x axes, which means it goes down and to the left, which is basically the same thing here. Now, of course, when you have negative slopes, note that when, when you have a quotient of two quantities and it's negative, this means that the two quantities have to have different signs here. So that means one, uh, one of them is positive, one of them is negative here. So we can make things a little easier with the run. Let's say the run is positive, just without loss of generality. That means as we're moving to the right here, the run, the rise is negative. So that means it's going to go, it's going to drop as we go. So in this case here, something like this, we can draw a line like so. Here, m is less than zero, right? Our rise is negative, our run is positive. Alternately, you can go the other way around. Now, if m is equal to zero, right? If we have equal to zero here, that means the only, so if this is equal to zero, the only way for that to occur is if delta y is zero, right? That means the rise doesn't change. The line doesn't rise at all while the line runs. So m equals zero here really just means a horizontal line, something like this here. So here, something like this, we can sketch this line like so. Here, m equals zero because there's no rise. This line is completely horizontal here. Now, of course, in addition to horizontal lines, we can also have vertical lines as well. So a vertical line would look something like this here. Now, for the vertical line, note that the things have changed. Um, now we have our, um, this is a vertical line here. Notice that now there's a rise, but there's no run. The, the, the x coordinates don't change at all. Uh, so that means in this situation here, essentially what we have here, if we look at our thing here, again, delta y over delta x, delta x is zero. So that means it's not changing here, which means that we're going to have a zero denominator. Uh-oh, we have a fraction with a zero denominator, so the fraction is undefined. So this here, m, is undefined. So we say that it has uh, no slope here. An alternate way you know, to think about this here is you can also think of the slope being infinitely, high, uh, infinitely large because you can think of the, uh, the run being very, very tiny in comparison to the height. But you know, in general, we generally say it's undefined where it has no slope here. So you want to make sure you have these four kinds of lines here. You have you know, positive slope, negative slope, your horizontal lines have zero slope, and your vertical lines have undefined slopes.